Okay, good afternoon again. It's uh, 3.59. Uh, I'm Richard Wee from Richard Wee Chambers. Uh, with my colleagues in the RWC is Ms. Wong Ziying, who's also part of our sports law team. Um, I'd like to thank people who is uh, registered and logging in. Thank you very much. Uh, kindly, kindly keep your mute, uh, keep your microphone on the mute button, please. And for uh, our friends who are watching us on uh, Facebook, thank you for, for logging in to watch today. Uh, today's uh, webinar uh, is part of the RWC's, um, the law firms, of course, uh, Richard Wee Chambers RWC, is part of our law firm series to uh, prepare for 2021. Uh, last week, we had a talk about the uh, short-term rental, uh, also known as Airbnb, pertaining to the recent federal court case in Malaysia, where uh, the federal court has held that the Airbnb may not be allowed in condominiums and apartments uh, based on certain laws and rules. Today, is uh, the discussion is about the WADA Code, World Anti-Doping uh, Code 2021. We will call it the 2021 Code. Uh, I don't normally like to call it the WADA Code of 2021. Uh, and I've been corrected not to call it that way, uh, but we'll call it the 2021 Code. Um, uh, we have uh, three really esteemed speakers with us today and i would like to first say thank you to the three speakers who are sharing their uh, hour one hour plus with us here today um, and the uh, speakers are mr gobinadin from sirado based in singapore hi hi gobi hi hello hi uh, uh, our very own chair azura director of uh, anti-doping agency of malaysia adamas hi azura hi azura mm. hi and then of course uh, the well-known Dato Dr. Kima, who is, uh, who's been in uh, the sports arena for a long time. Hi, Dato. Thank you for joining us. Hi, Thank Hi. you very much. Yeah. Um, and to all of you here, we have got uh, 30 over uh, people registered on Zoom. And we understand there's a lot more people watching us on uh, Facebook Live. We will be doing this for about an hour. This will be the format of our um, webinar. This is not a situation of uh, each speaker presenting a slide for half an hour. Uh, we won't do it that way. Instead, we have already agreed among the, the four of us certain issues which we would like to share with the public. The, the purpose and intention of this webinar is to share information and try to educate the public of the uh, impending uh, new 2021 code. So it's more like a, a tuition session uh, for those interested in anti-doping. Uh, before we start, I would like to first invite every speaker, uh, each of them, uh, to perhaps uh, introduce themselves, share a little bit about what they're doing, uh, what each of their, your organization are leading in. Can I first invite uh, uh, Mr. Gobinat uh, uh, from uh, uh, Sirado? All yours, Gobi. Thanks, Richard. Uh, before I begin introducing myself, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Richard Reed Chambers. It's actually really wonderful to see the private sector coming in, taking the initiative to organize such a, a forum or platform for sharing. Uh, I basically have over 30 years uh, of experience spanning education, military, corporate, as well as sports. Uh, presently, I'm the Director General of the Southeast Asian Regional Anti-Doping Organization. At the same time, I serve in the Anti-Doping Singapore Advisory Board. I'm also an external auditor for the World Anti-Doping Agency. At the same time, serve in the Anti-Doping and Medical Committee of OCA. All right, so basically that's what it is. Our main strength with regards to this region, uh, with regards to our strategic objectives is capacity building, compliance, as well as uh, uh, relationship and communication. Much obliged, uh, Gobi, thank you so much. Uh, effectively, you are the regional anti-drug guy. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> don't mess around with Gobi when you're in company. Yeah. So, okay. Uh, uh, much obliged for that introduction. And uh, as we can hear, ladies and gentlemen, we have a regional uh, leader who will be sharing with us uh, from the Southeast Asian perspective of the 2021 code. Next in line, can I invite uh, our director of Adamas, uh, Azura? Uh, Chi Azura, can I uh, invite you to introduce yourself, please? Okay, good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Uh, thanks to all the uh, panelists, Mr. Gobi and uh, Dr. Kima. Uh, I'm Azura Abidin. I'm the director of Adamas. 
uh, I've been with Arama since the last uh, September 2017, uh, 2019. It's been a year already in uh, Aramas. And um, previously, I was attached with the uh, National Youth and Sports Department in the ministry. I've been all over the uh, departments in the ministry, except for the, the states and also uh, a few other departments that I haven't you know, been, been attached to. So Aramas is actually a, a new place for me. Uh, I have to admit, this is a very challenging and a, a very uh, serious uh, place that I've been put into. So I depend a lot on, on uh, Mr. Gobi to guide me and also to, you know, to give advice and guidance to, to, for me to run Adamas. And uh, I'm also the uh, Sirado board uh, member uh, also in, in the Sirado. That's all I think for now, Richard. Thank you, Azura. Thank you so much. And I can attest to what Azura is saying that she is sitting in a very difficult and tough position. And you're holding yourself well, Azura. You know, it's uh, not an easy job, but like what uh, John F. Kennedy once, uh, uh, John F. Kennedy once said about uh, people going to the moon, uh, they do what they do because it's not because it's easy, but because it's difficult. So you do what you're doing because it's not easy, but it's difficult. So keep on doing what you're doing, Chazura. We, we are with you. Um, <clears throat> at this stage, I would like to invite, I dare say, uh, somewhat of a legend in the sports medicine area, uh, Dato Dr. Kima, who is uh, well known in uh, in uh, uh, OCM. Dato, can I invite you to introduce yourself and share with us uh, your current uh, post in OCM, please? Oh, you you need to unmute, uh, Dato. Unmute. You, you need to unmute yourself. Uh, let me try and help you. Ah, okay. Yeah, sorry, sorry. No worries. Uh, yeah, we, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, as what Gopi says, I think, you know, this series that you're holding, uh, it is very beneficial, not only to the general public, but I think uh, even a lot of sportsmen and sportswomen should be falling through. Instead of we going there, giving them lectures, this is a uh, platform for them to learn uh, about the new things happening in doping or in medical science. Thank you. Thank you for inviting us, uh, we. As uh, myself, uh, well, nationally, I'm the chairman for Medical and Anti-Doping Olympic Council of Malaysia. Then I'm also on the medical committee and anti-doping of SEA Games uh, regionally. And continental-wise, I'm also in the Olympic Council of Asia in the medical committee. And uh, actually, I started off being active in hockey at the FIS level, and now slowly concentrating on our regional side. Thank you, Dato. Thank you, Dato. Yeah. Um, it's really nice to have you on board. And Dato, uh, as I mentioned to you on a mobile phone a few times, uh, we would like to hear your views from the uh, sports association point of view. Of course, I know you're not from the sports association. OCM is uh, the governing agency. But it will be interesting to hear your views with regards to the 2021 code, uh, with regards to the SEA Games, the ASEAN Games, Olympics. Uh, how are we going to prepare for it? How are you going to face this? And how you plan to work with Adamas uh, for the benefit of the athletes? And as you mentioned to me the other day, Dr., uh, we would like to discuss about the uh, recreational athletes. We have this new mm. issue where the 2021 code will be governing the uh, recreational athletes. And in fact, uh, Gobi, in his telephone call with me, shared with me some very interesting cases of some unfortunate amateur athletes who, in Malaysian language, were kena, you know, kena positive. You know, <laughs> so we'll be so. Without further ado, let's start. It's only four zero eight. Um, uh, the, the premise is this, ladies and gentlemen, uh, who has just logged in and those who have been patiently waiting for us to start. Terima kasih. Thank you for joining us. Uh, the World Anti-Doping Agency has already made it clear that beginning of 1st of January, the 2021 code will replace the 2015 code. Um, from a sports law point of view, we have noticed quite a number of changes. We are keeping an eye on those changes. But today is not about sports law. It's actually about the code itself and that's why we've got three stakeholders sharing their views with us. Um, maybe I can start with you, uh, uh, Gobi. 
would have to set the tone uh, from a regional point of view. Uh, perhaps it, it, would that be if I if I if I bump into you in the street, Gobi, and ask you, hey, bro, can you share with me three most important or in your view the top three top five changes in twenty twenty one code? What would you tell uh, someone on the street? Wow. All yours, sir. Uh, that, that's challenging if I find someone in the street. So I got to find out whether whether the person on the street is an athlete or whether the person in the street is a support personnel. All right. Uh, but having said that, uh, the code has always been changing every five years. From two zero zero nine, the last one was twenty fifteen, and obviously the reason for the change is things develop. We can see the complexity of the doping scene, and as such. Uh, there are things that are changing, which is, which is going to change in 2021. Coming back to your question, you say three main things, all right? Uh, yes. Uh, it's very hard to summarize three main things because there is a nine-page document. Oh, of, no. <laughs> of, of, of all the changes, but I assume that you are an athlete, all right? So if I assume you're an athlete, the fundamental premise of this World Anti-Doping 2021 code is two things. One is health as the rationale for the code. All right, this is the first time they're putting health as a rationale for the code. And secondly, the fundamental rationale is athletes' rights. All mm. right, these are the two main things with regards to the basic premise of the 2021 code. Having said that, there is actually a lot of changes in terms of how one person is considered positive or anti have violated the rule, anti-doping rule violation. All right. Uh, so I can't say it in one more sentence because there's a couple of basic rules that have changed. So let me know whether you have the time or you want to move on or you want me to touch on this. <laughs> yeah, definitely we can do a little bit more. Of course, uh, to be fair, uh, I just mentioned top three as a casual <laughs> talk. <laughs> I know there's more than three, definitely more than three. Okay. But is there anything else you want to highlight uh, for us, the changes? Uh, uh, I, I all, think some of the... Yours, some, yeah. yeah, some of the changes include this. One is tempering. Previously, when you talk about tempering, tempering is purely at the doping control station. Right now, under the new rule, tempering goes all the way up to the results management hearing. And the reason being, you have heard, or a lot of you may have heard of the Russian cases. So they yeah. have been tempering along the way. So tempering goes all the way there. All right. Uh, the second uh, main thing is regards to uh, the protection for individuals reporting violations. All right. So discouraging someone from reporting information or retaliating against someone for reporting information is a new rule. So previously there was 10, 10 rule anti-doping rule violation. Now there are 11. Mm, All right. So one. this is another important one. And uh, I think, yeah, I think I'll let the others have a say and then I come to some of new stuff. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. As I say, we have a lot of changes. And the last one you mentioned, Gobi, is effectively about Whistleblowers, right? Yes, exactly, mm. exactly. All right. So everyone might say, "Hey, don't tell. Keep quiet." You know. So if yeah. someone retaliate or discourage, uh, it can go up to lifetime ban, uh, anywhere mm. from two four years to lifetime ban. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Can yeah. I uh, invite uh, Azura, uh, perhaps from a national point of view, taking into account the impending court which is coming in? What are your plans? Uh, uh, the role of Adamas uh, as a national anti-doping organization. What, what do you see your role and how do you intend to implement this? Okay, thank you, uh, Richard. Uh, basically, there will be three major roles uh, which uh, Adamas will have to uh, take responsibility in. Uh, one is the, we have to be in charge of the anti-doping at, at, at the national level. Yeah? Um, with regards to this, uh, Adamas is responsible to adopt and to implement the anti-doping policies and rules that conform with the anti-doping code uh, and uh, also to comply with the international standards. Uh, maybe later Mr. Gobi will, will tell you more detail about the international standards. Previously there were six uh, mm. international standards. Now we under the new code there, there are additional two uh, international standards that we have to abide to which is the uh, on education and also on uh, result management. So we need to say here that being, being a, a NADO, a national anti-doping organization, uh, we hold this uh, responsibility to ensure that every party, every stakeholders in the ecosystem of sports development in Malaysia uh, 
abide and also to follow the the both the code and also the uh, other mass anti doping uh, rules that will be implemented by January twenty one. Mm. Second will be on the um, education part. Uh, Adamas will be the authority on the anti-doping education uh, in this country. Uh, meaning to say that Adamas will be the, the leader. Uh, we have to plan, implement, and also to evaluate plus to promote on the uh, anti-doping education to all target groups. Especially when Mr. Bobby mentioned just now, uh, starting uh, next year, uh, health will be uh, fo more focused rather than doing testing and also investigations. Mm. But again, uh, looking into the um, ecosystem of sports development in Malaysia, we have to work very close, especially with the uh, uh, NSC, uh, the NSI, even the Olympic Council. So they will be our closest uh, stakeholders that we will be working together closely by next year. Because talking about education, it has to go from uh, the most top up to the bottom. And uh, maybe the last one will be the, our major uh, roles will be the, to ensure that uh, under the uh, authority of us being the NADO in uh, Malaysia, we have to also comply to the code and also to the international standards and to enforce this uh, and compliance. I mean to say if we, we do not comply to the new code plus the, all the um, rules and also international standards, other must is at stake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Interesting. So it, it looks like... Um... Uh, Adamas, have your roadmap ready and yeah. we look forward to, to uh, follow you. Especially, I really enjoy the educational part, uh, Zura, because uh, my law firm, we, are, we always listen to your talks on Facebook uh, and we, it's, very, uh, it's very nice because it's open live to Facebook. Jadi senang untuk kita to, to log on and listen and learn. Uh, yeah. So, much obliged for that. Thank you very much. Um, doctor, doc, Dato' Doctor, Dato' Hearing our two speakers who are clearly the people in the anti-doping agency, as, as a stakeholder from the sports association, in your case, the governing sports association, what is your, number one, what is your observation about the 2021 code? And number two, how does OCM intend to observe the 2021 code? How do you intend to apply the 2021 code? All yours, Dato. Uh, mute. <laughs> uh, we need to mute that. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, in the last few years, the system of doping in the world has changed so much, and it's fallen. Or the system has fallen in place, especially like they got the uh, Sierra Dope at the regional level, and now they're given a lot of the task to our own Nado, that is Adamas, which is an excellent thing. It's a full-time job for them. Uh, more so like education is totally under them now. We only play a substantial role of life with the NSS. This is excellent. It is all managed by Basirado, excellent. So I feel, I feel like people in the NOC who are not full-time paid, their role comes at liaison between NOCs like in Sea Games or in Asian Games or Formal Games. That is a bigger role. We are fall under the code 20.4 what we need to do as NOC is uh, get our members to comply with the code. That's the most important thing. It's heavy in the constitution. All right. It is not only the members, the athletes, the athletes, support personnel also supposed to be comply with the code. This is basically come to our level to make sure they comply and follow. And they must follow our NADO, that is Adamas, to comply with the testing and uh, uh, at the C Games level, our duty comes in to make sure that the host complies with the same code. And then we, like I sit in the C Game committee, make sure the system in place, like the next C Games in Vietnam. Uh, we had an online meeting on last Thursday mm. to listen to them. So we must make sure that our athletes, our support personnel, our officials are protected, not only on the doping side, as well as on the medical facility side. So any new thing comes up from the host country, is the NOC comes down and brief our NSS. All right, I see. It's what to expect, and this is uh, the new thing they're following, so that no one is lost like a sheep in a jungle when they attend the games. Okay. And, okay. and I'm glad that a uh, lot of role now Sierra do plays, and Azura from Adamas is going to do 
and anosis level is becoming much lighter now as compared to those days. Thank you. Okay, thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor. Uh, yes, Bobby. If I could just jump in a little bit to add to what Dr. Dr. Chima just mentioned. Uh, in, in the 2021 code, all NOCs have, are also signatories. All right, so NOCs are also signatories. All the NADOs like ADAMAs are also signatories. Yeah. All right, so that kind of binds them, number one. Mm. Number two, we must understand that Sea Games Federation is not a signatory. Mm, yeah. All right. Now, this is the latest, uh, maybe uh, three, four weeks ago, because WADA has sent to all the games organizers who are not signatories to ask whether they would like to be signatories. Although, all along since 2015, the Sea Games anti doping rules is in line with the world anti doping rules. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, thought I just let you know yeah. that. Interesting. So uh, let, let's hope that will that red tape will be resolved eventually. Yeah. So, ladies and gentlemen, so far what we have heard. Let me just summarize before we move on. Uh, we've heard from uh, Mr. Gobi, who set the tone by informing us a few uh, changes to the 2021 code. Uh, he mentioned one of the so-called whistleblower uh, rule, where it's encouraged for you to inform a, a report about. Uh, the 2021 code, and I early on mentioned about the issue of uh, uh, recreational athletes, which I will talk to Tato later about it. We heard Azura mentioning about the Adamas's plans. They already know about the code. They have a plan, uh, educational issue, implementation issue. Uh, they have a plan for the next one, two years. Let's see how it works on, and I'm sure it'll be a five-year five, five year plan eventually. And Dato already mentioned to us that they have read Rule 20.4 of the code, uh, the Rule 20.4 is very clear about roles and responsibility of the National Olympic Committees. Uh, they are already making plans to work with the uh, other associations. So, so far, uh, all parties are already on the go. You know, we are, we, are, we are on the ball and we are on the go moving into this. Now, moving forward, the next issue I would like to, to raise is that with regards to uh, Cirado, now that, uh, Gobi, we have heard of these proposed changes, proposed plans, from the regional point of view, how do you intend to uh, perhaps liars and perhaps uh, speak to your all, all your member bodies sure. and the other relevant stakeholders to ensure mm -hmm. the smooth implementation of the 2021 code? Maybe sure. you can share that with us? Sure, a couple of things. One is we are constantly monitoring uh, whether all member countries have submitted their NADO rules whether they have adopted the rules and we have actually requested them as to how they plan to implement the rules, mm. all right? So we are constantly moving along that line, all because there's a new uh, international standards in education, all NADOs are expected to submit their education plan to CIRADO. That's in one of the articles in the code, all right? So we have done a webinar recently with regards to anti-doping education, that's number one. Number two, uh, at present, there is something known as Coach True, uh, which is an e-learning module for coaches, and Alpha, an e-learning module for athletes. Uh, just for your information, the Coach True is translated in five different languages in the region. In fact, Southeast Asian region have the most number of translation. All right, that's number one. Number two, uh, this is also hot from the press. It's not officially out, but I'm in touch with the anti-doping education with machine learning, et cetera, taking place. WADA is actually looking at the athlete pathway and also looking at the co uh, coaches pathway. So I they see. have bite sizes, uh, e-learning modules, such as e-learning modules for registered testing pool, e-learning modules for international athletes, e-learning modules for national athletes, all right? Now, having said that, all this will be translated even in Bahasa, and we are trying to translate as many languages in the region. And with machine learning, it's going to be much more cheaper. Mm, mm. Sounds very interesting. In fact, uh, sounds like it's, it's, uh, it sounds, even hearing it only sounds very effective, <laughs> <laughs> knowing uh, how uh, the, our anti-doping system works. But on a small point, uh, perhaps more of a, uh, because of our areas of practice, what about the result management issues? Uh, will there be any evolution, any changes? Ah, uh, 
Good, good, good question. Good question. <laughs> uh, the resource management has always been a, a bone of contention, actually, you know, uh, because there's always this issue, whether in terms of result management, whether there's a transparent, fair hearing and independent hearing. All mm. right. So under the new code, there is actually a lot of results management items has been taken out and there's a new international standards for results management. Mm. All right. So two issues first. All right, you have the hearing committee, you have the appeals committee. When it comes to the hearing committee, all right, they got to be operational independence. All right, uh, at least at the first level, they got to be operational independence. That means, what do you mean? All right, if suppose uh, an athlete in, uh, in Malaysia is caught and Adamas is taking the case with regards to the hearing, Adamas has done the testing, Adamas is the, is the prosecutor. All right. So if Adamas is the prosecutor, Adamas cannot be in the jury at the same time. Yes. All right. And the panel got to be an independent panel. Okay. Uh, I, I, if I'm not wrong, previously uh, there used to be national federations doing the hearing. All right. Now this may end up in a lot of lopsided kind of uh, verdicts given. All right. There's, there's somebody's music coming. <laughs> All right, uh, I think that's one. I think the second thing is with regards to the appeals. The appeals ought to be at institutional independence as well. That means no one is involved, even Adamas, the government, or NOC, etc. Again, by independent body of three people. All right, and I know Che Azura is actually looking into it. She has got a good grasp of what was been happening before. And, and to tighten things up, yeah. Uh, definitely a, a lot to do in, uh, on the issue of result management being a uh, practicing lawyer. So we would like to see an independent tribunal being part yeah. of this. I think in an ideal world, we should have a permanent, in your words, a, a operational independence, right? Mm. Uh, it would be ideal to have a specialist tribunal to hear anti-doping cases or mm. at least or in the larger scheme of event, a sports tribunal to hear mm -hmm. anything related to sports in this region. Right? Obviously, if you have a sports tribunal, that is the ideal, all right? In moving towards that, the appointment of the results management and appeals should not come from by right from Adamas. Mm. Yeah, so that's independent, yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's, it's work in progress, WIP. Continue, <laughs> continue yeah. evolution and improvement, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so uh, uh, on that note, if I can, flowing from that, going to Che Azura, uh, Che Azura, hearing, hearing what Kobe has mentioned to us, uh, the plans of, uh, even the plans for the coaches, the athletes, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, from the uh, Adama's point of view, what are the national plans to implement uh, the WADA code, which I believe will include uh, the latest uh, rules on governance? Maybe you have any comments on that, uh, Che Azura? Richard, can you, can you proceed to mute Dr. Chima first? Because the Azan oh. is on there. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Okay. No worries. Uh, Dato, Dato, yeah. um, we were discussing earlier about uh, some of the rule changes from the WADA code. I, I was wondering, well, can we just dive into one interesting area, uh, which I think will fall within uh, OCM's uh, scope, which is the... Uh, recreational athletes, and I think Gobi also have comments on that. Um, how do we how do we deal with uh, people who are in the gym, people taking part in marathons uh, for fun, running ten kilometers? Uh, what what do you envision the future to be for this kind of situation? Well, uh, in Malaysia, frankly, I'm a bit concerned. This concern I've you know, told many times a few years back as well. Uh, the recreation athletes about recreation drugs. See the youth not knowing when they go to discos, they go for parties, what they're taking, which could be a bad drug. That is the biggest worry now. That's where now, uh, like your webinar or other must getting education thing program launched. CRADO getting the new system get, uh, of education to all the F affiliates. I think this is going to be very helpful because recreational drugs, many of them are banned. All right. 
and they, if you're participating in a youth age tournament, you're gone. Not only that, all these new fitness centers being opened up, you know, you know, in life, nothing comes easy. You want to build up a body, there's a lot of sacrifice. If there's a shortcut, there's some hunky panky. So advice to all those guys, be careful of what you consume. Mm. After mm. sitting on so many doping cases, every time the same excuse that I took a supplement, gave me by this gym instructor, gave me by so-and-so, by my uncle and auntie, all this doesn't work. You're caught, you're gone, because what you consume. Please be aware that this is not a new code. This has been there from before as well. You can't escape the testing. So all those guys, especially the youth, the, the senior athletes, they know what they're consuming. They very well know what they're consuming because we have all the time warned them, do not take a supplement until unless approved by our authorities in ISM. All right. So, but the younger generation are the ones which, which get carried away by, by, their, by their coaches or the gym instructors to take this, this is a bodybuilding one, you know, get a muscles pass. They want to go the shortcut. There's no shortcut in life. Mm. That is my only advice to all those guys, especially the younger generation. Be careful of what they consume. Good point, uh, Nacho. I mean, in fact, um, it is a concern uh, because more and more uh, Malaysian, since we are in the Malaysian context, and I know for a fact they, the Southeast Asian region, many people are into uh, healthy sports. Uh, they are into running, cycling, gym. Uh, South Asian people like to take part in sports. So they will also need to know their rights, when they can be tested, uh, what is the extent. And in some athletes, in your case, is what you see, Dato, the young athletes who are off-season, they may be going for clubbing, discoing, and they, they end up consuming certain drugs. They'll be in trouble, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, that is where. That is the most important part. Those younger ones, all right? Being unaware that these drugs are also on the band list. Not only yeah. harming the body, you know, but you, you have brought shame to the country. Yes, exactly. Yeah. All the money spent on you on training you and sending you overseas for training is all gone down the drain. That is very bad. And I feel even if one athlete from our country is caught, you have brought a lot of shame to the country. No one, nobody. Why should you be caught? If you are clean, why should you be caught? That's all. Mm. So please be aware of Please be aware of supplements. Main thing is that that's the one most of the time they are caught unaware. All right. Uh, the high end athletes, if they are caught, I'm thinking it's usually they're knowingly doing it. All right. To, to beat the system, but it can't be the system. Mm. Don't forget your blood and urine is kept for the next nine, 10 years, and they can be tested. If the new system comes in, it will catch you again. So avoid. Avoid shortcuts. Thank you, Doctor. Um, Chi Azura, sorry about the uh, prayers. I, I apologize for interrupting the prayers uh, this time. Um, can, can, on that point of note, uh, Chi Azura, since we are talking about this, any plans by, other than my earlier question to you, which is plans by the NADO to implement the rule, what about the plans about this definition of uh, recreational athletes, etc., etc., under uh, the, the, the appendix of the water code. Yeah, um, I've referred to Mr. Gobi a few times on the, uh, especially on the definition of the recreational athletes and who are involved in recreational yeah, exactly, yeah. competition or whatever. But uh, again, it depends on uh, each NADO's interpretation of uh, the recreational athletes. So what, what we do now here in Adamas, of course, we will consider recreational athletes those who are involved in physical activity and also some fitness and as well as other sporting activities which requires movement of the uh, of the uh, physical and also the uh, sp spiritual as well. But again, talking about um, putting them into the new scope of uh, target group in the new code, 
uh, what I can see now in Adamas, we will concentrate mostly on uh, education, especially for the common recreational athletes, except for those who are going to participate or represent the country. Those who, who will be representing the country, for example, um, there is an association uh, sanctioned by the International Federation, for example, um, Malaysia Association for Dodgeball, for example, okay, going to compete at international level. If they are sanctioned by the IF, International Federation, then they are subject to the code. This is what I've discussed also with Mr. Gobi. As long as they represent the country and as long as the uh, event is sanctioned by the uh, uh, IF, they are subject to um, testing. So again, in this new area, I mean, the new scope uh, is a bit tricky, but um, what I'm looking forward uh, for this new group of uh, athletes, we will focus more on the education part and as well on the overall health awareness mm. on um, anti-doping. Thank you. Thank uh, you not, to say, but, uh, not to say a pro testing will be the priority, but again, it goes back to basic. We have to go right to the bot to the grassroots and to ensure that every athlete uh, well, 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 well informed of uh, what they are taking and uh, to make sure that the message is uh, delivered right across, I mean, the country and also to the grassroots level of uh, sports yes. uh, bodies and also activities. Yeah, totally agree. Uh, I think that's a fantastic approach. Um, no use trying to always go and chase after the bad boys when actually we should try to tell them how to be good guys or good girls. Um, but to be on, on just, uh, I'm not trying to hop on the issue again, but it is very interesting that in the WADA code, the 2021 code, uh, the definition of uh, uh, recreational athletes is actually a, a negative definition. It states what it cannot be. It says that people who used to be uh, an international athlete of the last five years, yes, yeah. like, I would say people like, who take part in marathon would probably fall into this who are not a national athlete. Uh, you know, so uh, for example, uh, my wife and I, we take part in running for 5 kilometers, 10 kilometers, and I'm 100% not a national athlete. So I guess I will fall within there. Yeah. Gopi, do you want to add on, on yeah. this issue? Yeah. Um, with regards to my esteemed colleagues who have given their inputs, I just had a couple of pointers just to consolidate. Now, there's two things here. One is, if you're, if you're looking at athletes in the fitness, gyms, etc., one is to ask the question, do Adamas has any jurisdiction over these athletes? And it's very high li likely that you don't have any jurisdiction of these athletes, mm. those working in the gym. Unlike our counterparts in the Nordic countries, example, uh, Netherlands or Finland, where there is laws where these, those working in the gyms also come under this law of world anti-doping uh, court law. Okay, so that's number one. Number two, with regards to substance of abuse, we must be very, very clear. One, there's a category of illicit drugs. Okay, now that under your penal code will be taken care of. All right. Number two, there are supplements, obviously, which is a different category. And obviously, it'll be good uh, as part of education to also come out with some form of uh, supplement policy, which Singapore recently came out, the Anti-Doping Singapore together with the National Sports Institute came out with a supplement policy. Uh, and the third thing which I want to mention is, this must be contradicting to what some speakers spoke earlier, because substance of abuse is quite prevalent maybe in the West. Okay, so under the new rule, some substances on the list will be identified as substance of abuse by Waters List or expert group. And they say a three-month sanction will be given when an athlete can prove that the use happened out of competition yeah. and, an, and unrelated to sports performance. Mm. So you see, uh, again, uh, this can be a bit dangerous. And they say yeah. the sanction can be re reduced to one month if the athlete com uh, completes a rehabilitation program. So it's a bit challenging. It's a bit challenging, yeah? All right. So again, we need to be mindful. And as I mentioned, I think education is the key. All right? Totally, yeah. Yeah. You know, um, uh, <laughs> I respect you guys because you guys, uh, all of you have the quote like this, even though it's new. 
And then my colleague and I, we, we, we have everything printed. We burn a lot of trees to print this. You know, we've got notes all over here. You, if you guys were sitting here, you can see all the books next to me. My, my colleague, I show you, uh, this is my colleague sitting next to me. Uh, we've, been, we've been preparing for this talk. We're like, wow, this quote is headache, you know. So, uh, so you, you see the, uh, the, the colors we put on our... <laughs> So, okay. Um, so, I, I, Richard, I if I can just add in one more thing with regards to recreational athletes. This happened in Singapore in 2019, December. Mm. The International Standard okay. Marathon. All right. All right. Okay. Hello. Uh, I, 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 hello there. Ahmad, I think it's Ahmad Fawad. Yes, yes. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, go on. Sorry. Yes. I think Prof, is it? Prof, if you have a question, you can answer. See, so what actually happened was this uh, marathoner, she's a medical doctor. She woke up in the morning, she took some pills, she thought it was help her recover, etc. All right. And she ran. She came in first in the local category. All right. Uh, it is sanctioned by IAF and she got three years, nine months ban. Mm. All right. Yeah, yeah. So that's number one. There are recreational athletes in the US. I just heard another webinar. Okay, one age 80 years old. She was found positive. Yeah. At, at 80, she was telling, come on, I take medications for other things. <laughs> another, another interesting story, which I think a lot of people might be interested to find out. A, a university professor took part in a cycling yeah. event and he came in third and he was found positive. And you know what's the worst thing about being positive? After you are sanctioned, it has to be publicized, mm. all right? So when he was publicized, this professor got help from netizens and he went into a depression. He went into drinking, he had to seek treatment. Mm. And he said in the rule, he wanted to bring his son for, it affects his family. His son wanted to go for, to the velodrome and the velodrome admits people at the age of eight. When his son was seven he could, and he came turning eight, the son told dad, can, we, can I go to the velodrome? The dad can't bring him because when you are sanctioned, you are banned from entering these locations. Mm, mm, so mm. one of the things that came out was if there's a recreational athlete who is found positive, would you take, would you want to publicize? Again, that is in the hands of Adamas, how you define recreational athletes and whether you want to publicize. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of challenges ahead for Adamas. Yeah. But uh, uh, hey, Richard, can I just add in to what Mr. Gobi was? Uh, telling about publicizing the names of the athletes. Yeah? At the moment, yes, we under the uh, elite athletes, yes, we do publicize. Yep, yep you have to, yep. Why not? Even the recreational athletes are already in the code. So they, mm. have, to, they have to abide to the new rules, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Hello, uh, Richard. Richard, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm Prof. Fuad here from UNIS-KL RCMP Royal College of Medicine. Yes. I think uh, uh, what uh, Mr. Gobi mentioned and also uh, Juan Azura, they are quite true. It's just that sadly, it's what we call inadvertent doping. Mm, they, mm. they didn't even know that they are doing doping. So mm, that is why uh, we are yeah. trying to do some, we are doing studies right now, how to get everyone, especially mm. uh, the pharmacies, the clinics, to be more aware or have some form of methods to, to identify whether they are using this out of recreation or for clinical purpose. So we hope, we are hoping that this can come up with some form of strategies to prevent oh. inadvertent doping. Much obliged, Professor. I love this. I love it when the, our, our delegates uh, come in with a direct opinion. Thank you so much, Prof. Yeah. I think it's a good, not, not just good, I think it's imperative that all of us work together. Uh, one thing about anti doping uh, process, nobody is an island. We yes, all yes. Work together, yeah. Thank you so much, Prof, on that. Maybe Adamas will definitely lead the way on that. Uh, uh, Dato, would you like to add anything else, yeah. Dato? Yeah, it's good what Amafat said, but you see, end of the day, uh, we can make rules and regulations. The enforcement is the key. Mm. Yes. Yeah, you yes. can have, uh, even now, you, you know, everybody knows some of the pharmacies or the counter medicines, which are supposed to be prescription drugs they're selling. So it's good to have rules, but enforcement is extremely important. And it's better to have prevention rather than 
taking action later part. Mm, that yeah. is where the education part, it is extremely important. Yes. Thank but, you. Um, Thank you. Dato, uh, from OCM's point of view, would you like to share with us any, any proposals or any plans for uh, educating the athletes so from your side? Well, uh, uh, earlier days, we used to have uh, a talk just before major year sporting event, like SEA Games or Asian Games, and tell them all the warnings about doping and even show the, how doping uh, process occurs uh, when you go to the uh, venues. But now that part is education mostly taken over by Adam Mas. Mm -hmm. So like I said, at the NOC level now, we are trying to safeguard our athletes and officials when they go and participate there. So that we make sure it's transparent uh, result management, transparent action taken. You know, at one time, after the SEA Games, they should take even up to four years to do result management. And 2017, when we were the host, I made sure we completed all the result management within one year, and the next deserving athlete from whichever country got a medal. All right? And so that they, they were not only really shame, there's a lot of incentives now. Mm. You know, if you win a medal, and how can this guy wait for so long? So that is at the NOC level now, which our role is to make sure things fall in place at the regional or the continental level. And whereas uh, uh, Azura's role, I think, has become extremely important on the educational part. And our is to get the NSS involved with them and join together and get the program launched and uh, be beneficial, not only to NSS, all right, wherever the role uh, NOC can play with Adamas, even in the public, like this, you know, webinar, we are coming to give our views. Yeah, right. thank you, Nato. Yes. Actually, if I could, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, Chia Azura, can I invite Chia Azura to maybe give a comment about this and what are your, hang on, Gobi, hang on. Uh. Uh, maybe give any comments uh, because we, you, we asked a question earlier we, before uh, the prayers about governance because governance will also come into the issue of effectiveness. What are the plans for Adamas to be uh, independent as a governing body? <laughs> okay, uh, I'll just go back a little bit uh, on uh, Dato uh, Kima's uh, statement just now on the uh, cooperation between Adamas and also the uh, NOC and also the associations. Yeah? Um, basically, I had a discussion earlier with the uh, Secretary General of uh, OCM, uh, NOC. I think last uh, May, uh, Dato Kima, um, we did agree on, upon a few things. Yep. Uh, first is on the uh, cooperation of uh, between Adamas and uh, NOC on the uh, anti-doping education area. So at the moment, uh, under the NOC, there is one committee called the Medical and Anti-Doping Committee, yes. right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. What we suggest maybe in the uh, coming year, uh, next year, uh, with the new code coming in, um, we would like to see um, not only NOC but also the NS to have this committee on uh, anti-doping only. Let's put medical aside. So we, we want to see that education will be the priority in every uh, NF as well as NOC. Uh, on anti-doping. So what this committee gonna do is actually, we will work together with Adamas and we will, we will um, train as well as we will um, share together with uh, NOC plus the NF on the education plan that Adamas has developed according to the international standard of education and to abide also to the new code as well. So we will share this with NOC and uh, with the other NFs so that in uh, starting from new year on uh, next year onwards, NOC and the NFs will have a standard education plan for you to teach and also to uh, guide your, not only athletes, but your athletes sports personnel, as well as the coaches uh, and also your managers. Mm. So these are, these are the, one of the um, strategies that we are thinking from Madame Master uh, to enhance on the education part. And um, it's not that all this one, you, you, are, not, uh, you are not uh, focusing on education, but let's make it a more focused committee doing uh, what you're supposed to do. So mm. let's focus on education per se, and uh, 
not to focus more on the uh, on the, uh, the negative the, side testing or mm. let us anamas because coming with the new code in fact um richard was asking about the uh, national plans okay um once this uh, rules are uh, been adopted and you know approved by the uh, uh, ministry on the government of Asia, so we will have to set uh two major committees mm. one is on the uh, result management as mentioned mm. before, we will have to set up this independent uh committee under this result management it covers both hearing and also appeal the second committee will be the uh Therapeutic use exemption mm. that uh, at this moment Adamas is only uh, and this, this committee is operating on uh, at ad hoc uh, level, so we have to make it an official mm. committee. Uh, and the other thing is we will set up an advisory board. So this board is basically, or this why we 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 don't have this kind of uh, advisory board yet. But this is a uh, compulsory for us. Uh, I believe this um, advisory board is needed for uh, Adamas as to guide us, you know, as to uh, also advise on the running on the operational and also the institutional uh, area of uh, Adamas in terms of uh, uh, the operational part and also the maybe also policy uh, part of it. So th these are actually some of the uh, national plans that we are planning to do from uh, even since last last year until uh, we are targeting somewhere end of uh, this year for these uh, things to be settled. So hopefully by, by January, we can kickstart everything. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully. Yeah. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It can be done. Yeah. It can be done. Yeah, Azura. Uh, anytime, you know, you can pull us on board. We'll be with you all the time. Uh. Yeah. I, I, uh, I okay. go back to that. Just now, what uh, Gopi said, uh, Adamas has no jurisdiction as compared to other countries on all these fitness centers, gyms, and all. That's true. What 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 I mean to say was, you see now, uh, national athletes also go to gym. Now you come to these recreational athletes who could be go to gym. It's a warning to, to them, not to the gym that we can go and attack them. It's a warning to the athletes to be careful of what you consume or what you are guided at a gym center or by whom. That is the point that we are trying to impart to everyone. Interesting. Uh, Richard? Gobi? Richard? Yes, Professor. All right, uh, a few points. Uh, sorry, Gobi, sorry. No worries. Uh, uh, okay, a few points there. I think uh, both Dato, Shima and also Azura pointed out something very good. Uh, just to share with you, I just heard, I don't know how far it was going to be, that the pharmacy, um, the pharmacy uh, board, will have this enforcement going into the, all these gyms and also all these uh, physical outlets selling all these proteins. Mm -hmm. There's that possibility. I will, uh, they mentioned to me that they are going to think about going into all these outlets to look into whether the proteins are being tampered with or spiked with steroids. Now, the other thing that um, it is good that Adamas is coming up with this education committee because uh, we, uh, we are coming up, trying to come up with a vulnerability scores between, um, in athletes. So if this works out, the vulnerability scores can show whether uh, a group of athletes or an individual is vulnerable to, for instance, inadvertent doping. So this can be, how do I say, uh, tried on. We had this one, how do I say, uh, study done, but we are analyzing the data. Now, for the therapeutic use exemption, uh, we have uh, from the, uh, sorry, I'm a pharmacist, actually, a clinical pharmacist. What we can help is that uh, together, the university can set up uh, what we call that uh, medication review uh, committee, uh, or a subcommittee to help look into athletes with uh, chronic diseases. So we can, athletes registered with the National Council, uh, we can have the background of the medication that they are taking. And if we can advise them when they should use, when they should not use based on the, uh, the sports calendar, it can be of very much help in this therapeutic use exemption mm. committee. Mm. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, you know, 
I'm up for, I agree with uh, my party. There's a ready party who's going to go around. It's excellent. Uh, yeah. But the issue comes here now is uh, in, in Malaysia, supplements are not registered products. See? I know. So the, the list, the list they write outside there is different from what is inside. Mm, I hope yeah. there can be some regulation on that part. Yeah. Then, uh, the, then that's the, important. Yeah, the board is trying to come up with some form of uh, uh, how to go about doing this because they know they know that if over one week that an artist, sorry, so to say, somebody celebrity can come with all this muscle, something is wrong. Yep, that's so right. They are trying yep. to time find ways uh, which is <laughs> within <laughs> within the no, law and order that we can go and read them. Hmm. Okay. Come on, come on. Yes. Let's, yes. See, that's another thing now. Uh, the whistleblower act. You see, whichever athlete that we have caught before, they yeah. never want to divulge from which coach that took Yes, yes, from. yes, of course. It's like now they're yeah. protected. They are yeah. all protected. So that is something which our athletes thought should know that there is nothing to fear. Even, even in a case, a top official in your NSA pushes you to take such a, such a product of such such injection, the Whistleblower Act, mm. you know, protects you. Which is yeah. important. Huh? Thank you. Right. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Dato. Uh, excellent. Really, this is like a mini discussion. We should uh, record this for the minutes of the meeting for for Wada to take it. But Gobi, you wanted to say something earlier. Uh, yeah. All yours, Gobi. Yeah. I just have a couple of points. Number one is I think Professor Ford and his team is doing a wonderful job in Malaysia. All right. And the question is, how do you move from here? And what are the best practices you can pick from yeah. elsewhere? Yeah. One, one, one best practice is, for example, in Singapore, uh, the anti-doping Singapore has tied up with the pharmaceutical society so that every registered uh, medic medicine is actually, there's something called check drugs under the anti-doping Singapore. So you can just, so you're not just preventing, you're actually empowering athletes and coaches. They can just right. put, put in the name of the med medication and it will tell you automatically whether that has been substances, number one. Number Good. two. Thank you, thank you. Another best practice which can be done is actually what in Japan, a Japan anti-doping agency has with regards to their pharmaceutical society. Every drug that is registered in Japan and is out on the shelves, if you look at the ingredient list, they make it very clearly whether there's a banned substance. Now let's right. make it very clear. These are medical uh, substances, all right? Drugs for medication. We are not talking about supplementation. That is extremely hard. However, in a talk which I just gave recently on uh, performance enhancement drugs, et cetera, there are ways to reduce uh, the chances of you getting uh, inadvertent doping, all right? Yeah. There are, there are yes. companies called the NSF, uh, inform sports, which are organizations like the Australian Institute of Sports hired to bash test supplements, mm. right? So that's right. the two points I want to say on that. And the third right. point I want to talk is, I think this is something I'm telling the region all over the, all the countries in Southeast Asia. Move away, I don't say totally, from giving talks and talks and saying that's education. That's not education. The international standard of education has clearly indicated what's awareness, what's information, what's anti-doping education, what's values-based education. Mm. So I would encourage everyone to uh, take a look at the international standards of education and also who ought to be the educator. All right, not any Tom, Dick, Harry, Mary, and Susan. All right, <laughs> we got to we got to get the right person. All right. Because if you look at the, or at the history of uh, anti-doping, uh, it used to start off with the medical profession dominating, mm. followed by the uh, lawyers dominating because of the cases. And then came in the intelligence and investigation guys. And now the emphasis has always been education. Education got to be the first experience an athlete gets from anti-doping and not testing. Thank you. Mm. Thank you. Well said, well said, Gobi. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, well, we are, we are almost coming to five o'clock and I'm going to start uh, so, so, so fast, huh? so fast. I'm going to try and wrap it up, but we do have one question here. Um, I, I was not going to invite much questions because I know the speakers have much to say, 
Uh, Inche Halim have asked us here how to overcome steroids being sold online. Anybody would like to volunteer and answer on that? Um, Dato? Uh, Gobi? Okay, I would say it's not easy. Even uh, in Singapore, uh, a digital editor went undercover as a gym goer and found out that it's so easy to get steroids. All right. So the question here is, uh, if there is an intelligence investigation department, uh, and again, if there are rules and laws, uh, then that's the only way. Yeah, it's not easy. All right, steroids has really invaded the gyms. Mm. Okay, uh, that's all. I agree. I agree. You know, you can get everything online nowadays. It's not easy to catch them. In yeah. fact, it, it, you know, uh, I'm sorry to say, even a well-known doctor could have uh, ordering them for so-called use. And then it being sold for abuse. It's very, very difficult. Yeah. That's where yeah. that's where prevention is better than cure. Prevention yes. means education to the athlete. What harm is it going to do to you once you step down? Look at the yeah. world-renowned athletes who knock off just like that, dying on the bed, and they will all be champions. Yeah. Mm. You don't have to be a rocket scientist to know that. At the end, your body will break down and you will suffer. Yeah. I think that's yes. more important for them right. to realize. Yeah. Chia Azura? Uh, Chia Azura? Uh, sorry, Professor, uh, hold on. Yeah? Uh, it's all right. Uh, sorry. Yeah. sorry, Prof. Uh, Chia Azura, you have any comments about this question? Uh, uh, about the uh, online online uh, steroids. Yeah. yeah. I, Susah too. I agree with uh, even Mr. Gopi and also Dr. Uchima. Uh, we, we also discussed it at our, at our level. Um, so I think, um, although it is very impossible for us to you know, catch the culprit in level, but again, uh, with the strategic uh, cooperation with a uh, few agencies, which I can say now, maybe we have to work together with the, even with the customs department, you know, the uh, consumer department, as well as the uh, uh, you know, Ministry of Health, I think this could be we can we can minimize at least uh, with the education given, uh, but the enforcement part. Yes, I think I believe I always believe that that can be something can be done. Uh, you know, to to prevent this kind of uh, mm. selling online because as as you know, a lot of beauty products are not available, and with all the influencers coming in, you know, showing all their big biceps, you know, the triceps, whatever. <laughs> Uh, within one month, you're already thin, you know, and you are already firm, you know, tone and whatever, whichever area of your body. So it, it shows that, you know, there is something wrong with, with, the, uh, with the awareness of, um, of these people around us. Mm. So mm. This is what I always believe that, okay, that Dato uh, Shima said, prevention is always better than cure. But to me, it's yes, I agree with that. Education, yes, is very important. But also the enforcement kind of thing, uh, it, it has to go along uh, together with the education part. Well right. said. Yeah, well said, Chiang Zura. Well, it's, a, it's not an easy battle. We've been battling this for a long time. I'll never forget the infamous 1988 Olympic Games where <laughs> um, Ben Johnson was caught with steroids. And until now, we're still talking about it. Of course, steroids is not a bad thing. It's medically correcting. As one of you just mentioned, it's been abused. That's the problem. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. To, uh, in, in fact, Professor Ahmad, since you're here, you don't have any comments about this question? Uh, can I invite yeah, you? Yeah, yeah, just uh, something. Uh, I have friends in the um, uh, Ministry of Health, uh, the pharmacy enforcement. They are coming up. Uh, I think they already have online uh, how do you say, regulations against pharmacies or the selling of all these steroids. But again, uh, the, the fine is not high enough. And the other thing is they can just close one, uh, how do you say, online, uh, how do you say, website and open up another one the next day mm -hmm. so it is very difficult but i think uh, Pon azura is quite uh, how do i say correct in saying that customs need also come into force they have got to look into what is being posted and things like that so mm. dato and also uh, gobi mentioned awareness and education that's the only thing if you're mm -hmm. aware that this is not good you're not going to that otherwise it's going to be like you are chasing, keep on chasing, you know? Yeah. Because these people, they are so clever. You need to 
give awareness to the young ones that this is not right thing to do. Okay. Thank uh, you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, definitely one day. Yes. Ahmad, not to the custom. I think immigration as well. Huh? Yes, yes. Immigration. <laughs> yeah, I mean that. I mean that. Yeah. Immigration. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, thank you. Hopefully, thank, you uh, th thank you, Professor. Hopefully, one day when we hold another talk like this, and we will uh, continue holding talks on sports law, I will uh, like to invite Professor Ahmad next time. Uh, fantastic okay, thank news. You, uh. Yeah. 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 Nice thank to you. finally meet you. Nice to finally meet you. Um, thank you. Uh. So, uh, moving on, we would like to bring this to an end. Sudah makan. It's only 5.04, so sudah makan extra <laughs> four minutes. Can I invite our three esteemed speakers to maybe give a summary from their point of view. Uh, basically, the code is coming in. Is it a game changer? There's a question of the webinar. Do you think it's a game changer in your view now that we've got for one hour? So you can conclude that and then we'll wrap things up. Uh, we'll start off with Gobi. Uh, what, what do you think? Do you think the 2021 code is going to change, change the game? For sure, it's a game changer. All right. And I say this because you can see it, apart from the Russians, the International Weightlifting Federation, so it's all encompassing. It's not only anti-doping, there's corruption going on. There's many other things going on, but if there's one thing which I want to finally say is one aspect of education, which is what I syndicated in the ISC, which we did not mention is values-based education, mm. all right? Uh, millions of dollars have been spent in social science research, and it shows that if athletes have strong values, the chances of they ever moving towards doping is very slim. So let's all emphasize on values. Yeah. Well said. Game changer. Value based. Uh, Azura, uh, what is your conclusion, your summarization? Game changer? Yes, definitely, Richard. <laughs> this is this new code will be a, a game changer for all of us. You know, for most of our, my personnel, my staff here, including uh, me myself, we are all new in Adamas. Um, yeah, merely one year. This is actually a very challenging uh, 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 period, also. but it doesn't. It will not stop us. At mm. the same time, we have to make sure that the uh, code is implemented, uh, the rules will be adopted, and uh, at the same time, uh, delivering all the necessary things: education, awareness, giving information, and at the same time as well, it's gonna challenge us even more. Is to be uh, at a compliant state, no? Okay, so yes. it will be a totally game changer for us. But well, again, uh, as I mentioned earlier, uh, this is actually a, a, a big, big task, a big challenge. But yeah. as long as Gobi is with us, I'll be in <laughs> I hear the hint, yeah. We need Gobi, uh, Super Gobi. It's a team, team, it's a team effort. It's a team yeah. effort. Yes, yes. Thank you, that's but a it's good it's definitely a long way, long, long winding road ahead for you, Azura and your team. But rest assured, as you can see, there are many of us here who are willing to assist and support uh, Adamas anytime, including our, as I mentioned to you many times, including our law firm. We've been doing pro bono for Adamas for so many years. Anytime, <laughs> let us know. Let us know. Yeah. Dato, uh, would you like to summarize your views about uh, the yeah. code 2021 code, please? Yeah, we, uh, you know, these rules and regulations are man-made. They are not cast in stone. Every time they update something new, man will find another alternative. I'm still waiting, how far are we going to go? Huh? What happens when genetic doping comes in? So mm. it's going to be a challenge all the way. Olympics started off with amateur athletes. They couldn't hold it on, became professional athletes. Now you have giants playing basketball and volleyball who are eight feet tall with genetic doping, what happens then? It's a challenge all the way. Thank you. Much obliged, that, 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 yeah. Um, even though Professor Ahmad wasn't a speaker, but uh, I think his views were very, very effective. Can I invite Professor, maybe give a 30 seconds view on this, Prof? The only thing that I can say is that thank you very much for Azura to invite me. And it's quite a pleasure to, uh, how to say, to get acquaintance with Richard, Richard Wee, Dato, and of course, my friend over there, Sirado Gobi. And together, I hope uh, we can at least help to make some changes uh, for this anti-doping course. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we have, uh, at any given time, we have more than 50 people online in Zoom and many, many more watching us on Facebook. I want to thank those people watching on Facebook, but... Can we, everyone here, give a cyber round of applause to the speakers 
and our invited uh, a guest, Professor Ahmad, very, very well said. You clearly came prepared. As I said, uh, I'm still trying, struggling to understand the rules, but all of you have it on finger, fingertip. Well done. Um, and I want to thank everybody here who could be anywhere else today, but you logged on to watch us. Much obliged. I know times are difficult, especially those who stay in Slango. Uh, you don't even dare to go out. You're washing your hands every five minutes. <laughs> Uh, but you know, the, uh, we will prevail together. We will eventually prevail, right? Yes. So, thank you. With that in mind, can I uh, bring this to an end? I would like to thank everybody. Take care of yourself. Wash your hands, and uh, watch out for the next webinar. We'll be holding a few more webinars uh, in the coming weeks to prepare for twenty twenty one. Everybody, thank you. Take care. Adios, amigos. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank Bye. you.